Let me open us up in prayer and then we can start. So let's pray, everybody. Heavenly Father, I come before you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and I thank you for today's Sunday service. I thank you for your word, God, that that is true, that is the way, that is the life, God, that your word that is our bread, God, that gives us life. Lord, we thank you that we get to come here and we get to know you and to learn about you and to receive your love. Jesus, would you be in the center of today's message? I pray that everyone here, Lord, every student that is here, all my brothers and sisters here today would have a heart to op- to be open, to be open to hear and understand and listen to your voice, God. So Holy Spirit, would you um, impart um, a greater desire to hear you, God. God, I pray that you would be known today, Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, would you have your way? Speak in me and through me. And in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, everyone. Everyone, you're going to open up to 1 Samuel. You're going to open up to 1 Samuel, verse. You don't hmm. have a Bible with you. You guys don't have a Bible? Okay, that's okay. Then, London and Olivia, can you guys carefully listen then? Okay, good. 1 Samuel, verse 5. Can everyone read? Uh, Read with me. I'll read it for us, okay? I'm just read verse 5, okay? But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. Amen. So I'm going to keep reading. We're going to keep following. So don't close your Bibles, okay? Everyone, don't close your Bibles. We're going to constantly keep going back. I'm going to keep going back with you. But before we read this verse, we got to understand who is giving this portion to Hannah. And I want to give you a little background. Hannah and uh, a woman named uh, Penaniah. they are two wives. To a man, to a man named uh, Elkna. Elkna. It's hard. His name's kind of weird, but Elkna. He has two wives, and that's Penaniah and Hannah. And Hannah, right? She's very important. But Penaniah, she's she is a woman that actually was able to have um, kids, have children. Do you guys remember in Sam the story of Samson? His mom, his mother couldn't bear any children. That's the same for Hannah. Hannah, it says, right, that the Lord had closed her womb, meaning she wasn't able to have any kids. But Penaniah, she was able to have children. So we're gonna go to verse six. Everyone would. Can you read with me, please? It says, and her rival used to provoke her. And her rival, meaning that is Penaniah. That's who rival, That's who they're referring to. Used to provoke her grievously to irritate her because the Lord had closed her room. Can everyone say irritate? Irritate. You guys know like when you guys have an itch, it's like, ah, it's hard. Like even if you scratch it, it still comes back, right? Like you have a strong itch and you're like, oh, it's still itchy. In the same way, that's what, that's how Penaniah was to Hannah. Penaniah was saying to Hannah, you do not have children. And she was saying, making fun of her, mocking her, saying, you have nothing. You have nothing. And I want us to go back to verse five. Remember, Elkna, Elkna gave Hannah a double portion. And that double portion means when they go to they when they have when they sacrifice a lamb to 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 the Lord as a as a form of sacrifice and a cleansing of their sins and and the way you know remember they would have leftovers they would have leftovers of those sacrifices of those animals lambs all those stuff and they would keep it and eat it and cook it or use it for any other reason. 
And he would give some to Penaniah, his one wife. But he, he gave one portion, but he gave double the portion to Hannah. Why? Why did he give double portion to Hannah? Because he felt bad. He felt bad that Hannah had to go through all of this to be made fun of by Penaniah, to not have children, to feel, to feel so upset and grievous. Grievous meaning sad, so sad. So Hannah, we're seeing this story. She is so sad. One, because she can't have children, but because people look at her. People look at Hannah saying, you have nothing to offer. You are not enough because you can't bear children. Back then in culture, if you're not, if a woman cannot bear children, they are shamed. Can everyone say shamed? Hannah was shamed for not, a, for not being able to have, to not be a mother, to not have a child. Hannah, we're looking at the story and do you guys, raise your hand, do you guys feel bad for Hannah right now? Right? Who feels bad for Hannah? She's getting made fun of. And she feels so depressed that she doesn't, she can't have, she, she feels so depressed that she can't have children, right? I mean, I know the, the, that when you guys get older, you'll understand. But imagine, imagine seeing your mom. She, your mom wanting to have another baby, but she can't. That's exactly what Hannah's going through. So we're going to move forward. And we're going to move on to verse 7. And it's going to say, is everyone there? Verse 7? Are you guys following with me? Okay. So let's read verse 7. So it says, so it went on year by year. Okay, we're going to pause there. It went year by year. Meaning, for years and years, Hannah kept trying and trying. To have a child, but still she wasn't able to bear any child. We're gonna keep going. Let's keep reading verse seven. As often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. And we're gonna keep going. Therefore, Hannah wept and would not eat. Can everyone say wept? What does wept mean? Can someone tell me what wept means? London? Cried. Cry. It's crying. But it's actually more than just crying. Wept, meaning Hannah cried until there were no more physical tears. That until all the tears in her eyes, she cried. And she came to the, to the house of the Lord, right? She kept going to the house of the Lord and she kept weeping and weeping and weeping. And this happened year and year and year. She did this for years. And we're going to read verse eight. And Elkanah, her husband said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than 10 sons? Okay, we're going to pause there. Elkna, her husband, was saying, after year and year, why are you so upset? Why are you still so sad? Why are you still weeping? Are you not, are you not happy that I'm by your side? Oof. If I heard someone say that to me while I was crying, I personally would be so angry. Hannah, nobody understood Hannah. Nobody understood Hannah and her pain. And even her husband saying, aren't you happy that I'm by your side? But that's why Hannah, she felt like she had no one to turn to. No one understood her. And this is where the story gets so amazing. So we see, right? 
Hannah wept. And I'm gonna I'm gonna actually ask you guys to turn in turn to John chapter eleven verse thirty five. And I'll read it first. If you guys can't turn there, it's okay. If you John chapter eleven verse thirty five. This is the shortest verse in the Bible, hands down. And I'm going to read it for us. Everyone listen. John chapter 11, verse 35. Jesus wept. Can everyone say, Jesus wept? Hannah wept. And Jesus wept. Can you guys imagine Jesus weeping? Jesus, right? He is the son of the holy God. And he is weeping. Why is he weeping? Because right before Lazarus, he, he died. And Mary came to Jesus saying, where were you? Where were you when my brother was sick. Where were you when you could have healed him? You said you are the son of God that could give, that could heal the sick. Then where were you, Jesus? And when Jesus heard that, and when Jesus saw everything that was going on, it says, Jesus wept. If Jesus wept, and we can see that if Hannah wept, Jesus wept, something must be going on in their hearts. So I'm going to read for us, keep reading for us. I'm going to read verse 10. Everyone, uh, sorry, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10. We're going to go back to 1 Samuel. It says, verse 10, she was deeply distressed. And prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. Okay, wept is another thing, right? You're crying, but wept bitterly. Do you guys know the word bitter? Sad. It means to hold up anger. Hannah, she started to weep, cry with bitterness. What did she, I can only imagine what she would say. She would have said, and this is not, I don't know. I, I can only imagine what she felt like. But Hannah, I'm sure the fact that the Bible says wept bitterly, she wept with anger. She wept, to go, she started praying and weeping before God in, in the temple saying, God, why? She was probably saying, God, why? For what reason, God? God, years after years, I've been weeping and you have not said anything. You have not done anything. You have not given me a son. What is going on? So now we know, right? Now we know where Hannah is. Now we know the condition of Hannah's heart. Everyone say condition. The condition of her heart was so angry. Who gets angry here? Raise your hand. We all get angry. And there is righteous anger and there is sinful anger. Hannah, she didn't care if she was a right, had righteous anger or sinful anger. She was just angry that she had to live this way. And then we're going to read verse 11. This is key. I'm going to read. It says, and she vowed a vow. So we're thinking, okay, she wept really bitterly, right? We're going to pause it. She wept super bitterly, but now she's making a vow to God. What happened? What switched? So we're going to keep reading. It says, and she vowed a vow and said, 
O Lord of hosts, if you indeed look on the affliction of your servant, meaning if you look at the pain of me, the person that is serving you, and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to you your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of my life. Amen. So what did Hannah do? Hannah, she prayed a different prayer in this moment. She said, okay, God, if this is what it's going to be, I'm going to promise you. I'm going to make a vow right now that if you give me a son, I will dedicate him to worship you. Hannah, something happened in the middle. And I want to want, I want to know why. I want to know what happened. And, but what's crazy is in the story, I'm going to read for us. You guys don't have to turn there. It says, as she continued praying before the Lord, Eli, Eli meaning the priest, observed her mouth. And Hannah was speaking in her heart. Only her lips moved. But there was, but, on, but her voice was not heard. So Hannah, she was in this moment. And this is turmoil. You guys can see like so much is going on, right? But in reality, inwardly, that's all happening. But outwardly, Hannah, it's just tears. No voice. And then Eli, the priest said, uh, and he said, how long will you be drunk? That's what, that's what Eli the priest said. Because she, she looked crazy. And then Hannah responds, I am a woman troubled in spirit. I have not drunk, drink any wine. I'm not drunk. But I've been pouring out my soul before the Lord. God, God loves when we are honest. You know what I think in the story? I think God was waiting for her to be honest. God was waiting for her to be honest with herself. How angry she was. How, how much she wept. But I want us to remember, she did not weep because she didn't have a son. It, it does, it, it's because she didn't have a son. It's because she felt so unseen. She didn't feel known or seen. But that's why, God, you cannot feel seen or known unless you are honest. <laughs> that's just it. God saw Hannah pour out her soul. And what did, what did Eli the priest said? Go in peace. And the God of Israel, this is verse 17, will grant your petition that you have made him. Immediately, when she poured out her soul to the Lord, meaning she was honest, she said, God, I am angry with you. I am so mad at you. I am so upset. Why did you let me live this way? You know, God wants that. He wants our honesty. Can everyone say God wants our honesty? God wants our honesty. God wants that honest heart. And that's what God was waiting for, for Hannah. Years after years, 
she realized, right? When, when Eli the priest said, go in peace, and the God of Israel will grant your petition. And then she said, let your servant find favor in your eyes. Then when the woman, meaning Hannah, went away, went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. Okay, guys, we saw she wept so bitterly, right? And now she's no longer sad. What happened? God's love filled her. I think what God was doing in this moment with Hannah, this is one of my favorite stories, guys, because this is all of us. We can do this. She realized that she wanted to be seen and known by everyone else. But when she went to God, she put on a mask. She said, okay, God, I'm okay. I'm okay. Like, okay, next year, you'll give me a baby. Next year, you will, you will heal me. Next year, next year, next year. And it came to a point where Hannah could, had no more patience. But what happened to Hannah? She was honest before God. She poured out her soul before God. And something, something changed in her heart. When Eli the priest said, go in peace. What is that peace? That peace is the love of God. That God loves her. And then God sees her. God sees her pain. God knows everything that she's gone through. God has understands the things that, get, that make her sad, that break her heart. And she realized, oh, all along, God knew me. All along, God has seen me. All along, God just wanted my honesty. He just wanted my heart. And when she realized that, she went away from that place and her face was no longer sad. Why? Because the, the love of God satisfied her. Not having a child, right? Not having people love her. Not having the world accept her. Not having her not be mocked anymore. No. What happened after this? She was still mocked. She was still called, called uh, useless. Not enough. But what satisfied her was that God loved her, that God sees her, and God understands her. Remember when, when her husband gave her double the portion? Do you guys remember in the very beginning? Let's go back to that. First Samuel chapter uh, one, yeah, verse five. It says, but to Hannah, right? He gave, right? That's his, her husband gave a double portion because he loved her. Her husband thought, if I give her a double portion, she will feel loved. But Hannah understands now, ah, my double portion is in the Lord. Not in who I am and what I can give. But is my belovedness as a daughter and a son of God, a child of God. Can everyone say child of God? Everyone in this world is a child of God. Why? Because we all, we all, we all bear the image of God, right? We all are called to be children of God, sir. We are not, you are not a child of God until you really receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Who's forgiven you? So my message today, are you guys following with me? Give me thumbs up. Are you okay? 
Everyone okay? Okay. I know. This story reminds me that Jesus Christ is our double portion. Can everyone say Jesus Christ is my double portion? Jesus Christ, he knows each and every one of us uniquely and intimately. Meaning he knows us to, the, to, to even the piece of our hair. He knows us from, from when we were born, from when we weren't even born. And even now, God knows us. God sees us. Hannah. God knew Hannah. Hannah just didn't know. Hannah just didn't realize God knew her and knew her struggles and knew her pain. Jesus Christ, when we are weak, right? When we are sinful, when we sin, right? Because we are sinners. You and E, everyone here, you guys are sinners. But the blood of Jesus washes you clean. And he gives you new life and new joy. Hannah realized that is my double portion. That Jesus, the Jesus, she didn't know Jesus, right? She said, God is my double portion. Now, as we read the word, we remember Jesus Christ is my double portion. That when I am upset, I can come before Jesus and be honest, pour out my heart. But my other portion is that I am forgiven. That he does not hold any condemnation for me. God is not angry with me. God is not frustrated with me. No. Because of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on that cross, we have that double portion. That one, we can come before God as we are, but also that we could receive his forgiveness, not only his forgiveness, but also the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the helper that leads us and guides us to know him more. Do you guys follow me? You guys okay? Today, I want you to know, Jesus Christ is your double portion. And I want to share a story with you. I went a little long. Sorry. I think I, I love this story, but not many of you guys know um, how I came here, how I came to Onnery. Do you guys know? Like I came in January, right? I started pastoring each and every one of you as a children's pastor since January. But before that, you guys are wondering, oh, who was Pastor Jessica before? I wasn't a pastor, so I was just Jessica. I was just Jessica. I was just God's daughter and servant. But last year in March, something really sad happened to me. Just like Hannah, I, I wept so much. And what I want to share with you guys is that. How was you wept? How did I wept? Well, this is my testimony. A little bit before I came. Um, so in March, last year of March, my dad passed away. And so I was so... I was so broken. I was so broken like Hannah. I was so, so broken. I didn't know what God was doing. In the same way, Hannah, I could not take it anymore. And at one point, when, I'm, when I was by myself with God, 
I just began to weep and cry bitterly. I said, God, why did you do this to me? God, why did you take away my dad? God, why am I suffering so much? Why am I going through all this? And I'm, I wanted to share you the story for a reason. And then God, God began to show me his heart for me. For that time period, I started to ignore God. I said, God, I don't want to follow you anymore. I don't trust you. I don't care about you, God. You, are, you, you caused me so much pain. I was so angry at God, guys. I was so angry at God. I was so angry. And it wasn't until I was so honest before God. I was so honest to God. I said, God, I'm so angry. And then God, he started to show me that Jesus Christ is my portion. My double portion. Meaning, when I, that when everything else in this world will fade away, when people leave my life, when, when I, I struggle, one thing never changes. One thing remains is Jesus. Jesus began to remind me that he is with me, that he is walking with me, that he is right by my side, leading me and guiding me. But Jesus asked me, can you trust me? Again, he was saying, Jessica, do you trust me? And I think God is asking the same question to you guys. And I hope that that, what I shared with you, that you guys keep it deep, that testimony. And now God, he, right? Now after that, God, he started to work in my heart. And I started to, started to fall so, so fall in love with Jesus. I started to fall in love with Jesus so much after that. And then God, he led me here to pastor each and every one of you, to minister to you, to lead you guys to Jesus. So that is my, that's what I want to ask you. Do you trust Jesus? Can everyone close their eyes? Everyone close your eyes. Have you guys ever been angry with God? Have you ever sinned before God? But do you also believe in the forgiveness of your sin because of Jesus? I want to invite every single one of you to ask yourselves, do I personally trust Jesus with my life? Everyone close your eyes. And if you want to trust Jesus today, like I did, like Hannah did, then I want you guys to put your hand on your, on your heart, your right hand on your heart. If you want to trust Jesus today, then put your right hand on your heart. Do it only if you want, if you truly want to trust Jesus.
Now, begin to speak to God. Begin to talk to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I want to trust you. Jesus, I want to trust you with my whole life. Jesus, I want to have you in my life forever. Jesus, I want to trust that you are going to be with me forever. That no matter what it fades away, no matter what I don't have in my life, Jesus, I trust that you will be with me forever. Do you trust that Jesus loves you guys so much? So right now, let's begin to speak to Jesus and say, Jesus, I want to trust you. I want to trust you with this whole heart, with my whole heart. Let's pray, yeah. Keep praying, everybody keep praying. Keep praying. Ask God, ask Jesus, how can I trust you? Lead me to trust you more. Lead me to lead me to trust you. trust you Jesus that God that they can trust that they can win bitterly to you Lord God that they can be honest before you Lord Father, I thank you so much for our service today. I thank you, God, that that we got to meet you today. That we were in your presence today. Jesus, I pray that everyone that has placed their hand on their heart, who said that they will trust in you, they will trust that you will never leave them, that you will be right beside them, that Jesus, that you will take care of them, that you will love them. Jesus, so I pray, would you help all my brothers and sisters to trust in you. Trust in you with all their hearts. That no matter what happens in their lives, that they will trust you, trust in your love for them. The love that was demonstrated on the cross. So God, we thank you for our worship. We thank you for this time that we get to come and proclaim that we, that you are trustworthy, that Jesus, you are trustworthy. So Lord, we thank you for this time of worship. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Amen.